This is a quick uh, presentation on using metadata dictionaries for indicators. It's an Office Mix presentation, so you can begin by pressing the play button and then you can look at the table of contents. And if you want it slower or faster, you can slide the um, 1.0x uh, slider at the right of the slide. So what's metadata and why do we need it? Metadata is just information about data. So imagine that you're given a number like 42. You can't say anything about 42 unless you have metadata uh, to talk about uh, what it measures, how it's defined, how it's collected. It could mean the number of women receiving employment services last week or last year or last 10 years. It could mean the number of weeks that a program runs a year, average score, the code for program intervention as in program number 42, or it could mean the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe and everything. Who knows? We need a metadata dictionary because we need a way to store and create and share standardized definitions. We also need it to be able to link them to the programs and databases that they relate to. And I'm going to uh, show how this works by going through Meteor, which is the metadata dictionary used by the Australian government. Uh, they've set up a national online dictionary to store its definitions of outcomes, indicators, metrics, data sets, programs, and so on. And recently, their software has been open sourced and it's available to everybody. Now, here is a screenshot of Meteor, Australia's metadata dictionary. You can see the um, website address at the bottom of the slide. This is just uh, the description. It's not a beautiful system, so I'm not going to be focusing on uh, the look of it or the user interface. I'm, talk I'm going to talk about the functionality and what we can learn about what we need from our own uh, data dictionaries. Now I'm just going to start by browsing the registry. You can see here with the drop down menu, there's a whole bunch of um, areas you can browse. I'm going to start with the framework dimension, but you can see you've got uh, glossaries, you have indicators, indicator sets, outcome areas, quality statements, data sources, and so on. So choosing the framework dimension, clicking uh, browse, uh, that brings up this um, this list. These are the strategic frameworks that the Australian government are using in order to uh, monitor and evaluate their major strategies. So we, uh, let's just uh, scroll through and see what interests us. Let's use the ISO Health Indicators Conceptual Framework. You can see that this is uh, this can be um, structured in a number of ways. It can be a logic model. It can be a strategic framework. Anything you like. It's completely open. But let's look at social and community factors, which are non-medical determinants of health. So I'm interested in that. See what they call this. Okay, here. They uh, define the uh, social and community factors in this context. You can see the conceptual framework up here, non-medical determinants of health. And then here are the indicators in this framework. Well, let's look at uh, uh, one of the indicators. So you've got proportion of people with disability who participate in social and community activities. Um, it was, uh, it was uh, endorsed in 2012, that's the date. Um, here it has the short name, um, description, and so on. It's following international metadata standards for um, how you compute the indicator, uh, what the numerator is, what the data elements are. All of these are um, set in DHIS2, as well as any other system that's um, uh, tracking indicators. Uh, these are the recommended disaggregation, so you, you break it down by these uh, disability status, sex, age group, and so on. And then here are where they come from. There's the data source, the survey of disability. Uh, most of them is from the same survey, but uh, doesn't necessarily need to be. Here's the general social survey. Um, it's percentage. It's related to this conceptual framework. And uh, it probably is connected to more than one conceptual framework. Once you develop a good dis um, indicator, you want to be able to reuse it. And so one of the reasons for metadata dictionary is to come up with indicators, and then you can pull them in to different um, initiatives and frameworks and uh, outcome areas without uh, recreating them each time. So you've got these two main data sources. And then the accountability requirements are, is um, has to do with uh, how they are supposed to be collected and by whom. And uh, here we're going to be looking at this later, but the steward of this meta um, uh, data, the, this indicator is the Australian Institute for Health and Welfare. These are the people that are responsible for update, for making this definition and updating it and uh, endorsing it. So that's kind of quickly browsing the metadata. Let's uh, look at uh, uh, how we would search the registry. This is the uh, search screen. I'm just going to 
select outcome area for now. I'm not going to put any particular um, search terms in it and see what we come up here. Oh, so here are all the outcome areas that the government of Australia has defined. Uh, aged care, alcohol and drug abuse is among uh, Indigenous people is overcome. You can see that it doesn't have to be perfect here. This is partly to capture what you have already. And then as um, the definitions improve, you can uh, update them. Uh, you can see that uh, some are endorsed, while others have been implemented and are called standard. Here, um, we're going to look at families and carers are well supported, because I think that's an interesting outcome area. So I go into that. Um, this is an outcome area. So uh, you've got the metadata item type outcome area, the registration status. Uh, this is uh, the registrars that have um, uh, endorsed it. And um, here are the indicator sets linked to this outcome area. So you can um, link uh, outcome areas to um, data sets, and then you can link indicators to the outcome area as well. Uh, and you can see many of these have been retired or superseded. So you can, um, in many cases, people will collect uh, indicators. The indicator definition will be slightly changed year over year. This gives you a chance to um, track the um, different definitions that you might have been using in older data sets. Going on to the next, um, one of the, uh, uh, the indicators talked about community and civic engagement. And I'm using this to show that uh, a metadata dictionary also should be able to define basic concepts in a way that's, that can be used for communication, can be used for uh, different users. They don't have to be technical. Um, but it, uh, it provides one framework where you can store all the information that you need to uh, track for uh, the concepts that you're trying to um, uh, monitor. Uh, here's another interesting um, uh, piece of a metadata uh, a dictionary. You have to be able to uh, define all of the elements that you're collecting. In this case, these are clients for a particular program area. It's called bringing them home. And uh, you can see here that um, the definition of a client hasn't yet been totally figured out. So this is how far that they've gone in defining client. Um, there still has to be some uh, clarity if they're going to be able to compare data across agencies, but it's a good place to start. And uh, you've got the data elements implementing this concept. It's in the uh, bringing them home program. And then uh, finally, you have the working groups. Uh, the way that uh, a metadata dictionary like this works is that uh, different working groups have ownership over different sets of metadata. In this case, Disability Policy and Research Working Group are responsible for managing all of these indicators. And uh, this metadata dictionary uh, provides private areas where the um, working group can discuss, review, and then approve and endorse specific uh, indicators. Now, all of this is uh, Meteor. That's the Australian government um, metadata dictionary. This software has been open sourced. Here it is on GitHub. It's uh, been called Aristotle, Aristotle Metadata Registry. It's available to anybody. And uh, here they've got some uh, screenshots and uh, some information about um, the development of the program. The uh, developer, Sam Spencer, has uh, set me up on uh, a demo for the Aristotle Regi uh, Metadata Registry. You can see here's my name, Gillian. I'm, uh, uh, I am a registrar in my little working group. Here are the areas that you can enter. You can see the Comet Indicator Registry includes the indicator indicator sets, types, outcome areas, and also quality statements. So let's um, uh, look at the way it would work. Right now, it's a, a test work group. It's a, one that uh, I manage, there are discussions. Uh, and then uh, the registrar tools, when indicators or data elements or any kind of metadata are ready to publish, then the registrar for each of these working groups can say um, it's a candidate, is it uh, qualified? And then when it's ready to go public, they can make it public right here. And then uh, the last uh, demonstration of this, uh, Aristotle, they have tried to keep the actual screen simple. So here's the, uh, the underlying um, structure is extremely complicated, but each individual piece 
is looks like a form like this or you just fill it out and then as you go forward you can continue to improve its uh, quality and its detail.